In this video, we're doing an applied optimization problem where we've been asked to find two numbers whose product is negative 81. In other words, when we multiply them together, we get negative 81, and where the sum of their squares is a minimum. So the first thing we want to do with an applied optimization problem is always look for the word maximum or minimum or maximize or minimize and figure out what we're trying to maximize or minimize. So what we see is where the sum of the squares is a minimum. So we can underline a couple of things. We can say sum of the squares is a minimum. In other words, we're trying to minimize the sum of the squares. So what do we mean when we say sum of the squares? Well, if we call our two numbers x and y, then the sum of their squares, well, their squares are going to be x squared and y squared. So the sum of their squares would be x squared plus y squared. What we want to do is minimize this value, where the sum of the squares is a minimum. So whenever you identify that word maximum or minimum and you figure out what you're trying to maximize or minimize, you need to realize that you have to generate a function for whatever it is that you're trying to maximize or minimize. So we're trying to minimize the sum of the squares. So let's go ahead and call the sum of the squares here s. So we have s, the sum of the squares is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we want to try to minimize s. Now once you have a function for whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize, the next thing you need to do is make sure that it's in terms of only one variable. Well right now s is in terms of both x and y, two different variables. So we need to get it in terms of one variable and that's where we go back to the original problem because we've been told that the two numbers have a product of negative 81. So we can write a second equation, remember our numbers are x and y, so x times y, their product, when we multiply them together, is going to be equal to negative 81. So now if we go ahead and solve for one of these variables, let's go ahead and solve for y by dividing both sides by x, we get y is equal to negative 81 divided by x. Now we can take this value for y, so we have a value here for y, and we have a value here, y, so we can plug negative 81 over x into this equation for s for y. So what we get then is s is going to be equal to x squared plus, instead of y squared, we'll get quantity negative 81 over x squared. Now we want to simplify this as much as we can, so we're going to get s is equal to x squared. When we square the negative sign, it's going to become a positive, so this negative will drop away. 81 squared is 6,561, or 6,561. When we square the x in the denominator, we're going to get x squared. Now remember, our steps were, we identified in the problem that we were asked to minimize the sum of the squares, which means we needed to generate a function for the sum of the squares. We did that, we got it in terms of one variable, and we simplified it. So now that it's simplified and in terms of one variable only, our next step is always going to be to take the derivative of this function. First of all, before we take the derivative, let's go ahead and move this x squared in the denominator into the numerator. Remember, this is a rule of exponents. We're going to get s is equal to x squared plus 6561 x to the negative 2, we bring this x squared into the numerator, and the exponent changes from a positive to a negative. So now we have our function s, we need to take its derivative. So the derivative we'll call s prime, and when we take the derivative we're going to get 2x, 6561 times a negative 2 is going to be a negative 13, 122 x, and then power rule we subtract 1 from the exponent, negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3. Now if we rewrite this in terms of positive exponents, we're going to get s prime is equal to 2x minus 13, 122 over x cubed. We move the x to the negative 3 back to the denominator. The exponent changes from a negative to a positive. Now once we have the function for the derivative, what we always want to do is set this equal to 0 so we can solve for the critical points of the function. So we'll set s prime equal to 0 and we'll get 0 equals 2x minus 13, 122 over x cubed. Now we want to solve for x, and what we'll do is we'll add 13, 122 over x cubed to both sides. So we'll get 13, 122 over 
x cubed is equal to 2x. When we multiply both sides by x cubed, we get 13, 122 is equal to 2x to the fourth. When we divide both sides by 2, we get 65, 61 is equal to x to the fourth. And when we take the fourth root of both sides to solve for x, we get x is equal to 9 because 9 times 9 times 9 times 9, or 9 to the fourth, is equal to 65, 61. So we have this value for x, but we're not done. We need to make sure this is a potential critical point of the function. We need to make sure it is in fact a critical point, not only that it's a critical point, but also that it minimizes the sum of the squares. So what we want to do is go ahead and draw a number line. This is going to be our first derivative test, and we call it the first derivative test because we're going to be testing the critical point in the first derivative. The first derivative is s prime, so I always like to go ahead and say s prime next to my number line to remind myself that I'm going to be testing this critical point in s prime. I want to go ahead and plot x equals 9 right in the middle of the number line, so x equals 9. And then I want values on both sides of x equals 9. So we'll go ahead and say over here x equals 8, and over here x equals 10. And these values, 8 and 10, on either side of the critical point are the values that I'm going to be plugging into my derivative s prime as part of my first derivative test. So if I say s prime of the value on the left, 8, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, and I'm going to get 2 times 8 minus 13, 122, all over 8 cubed. Now remember, what's important is not the exact value of this right-hand side, but whether the right-hand side is positive or negative. When I do this arithmetic here, what I see is that I'm going to get a value that's negative. We'll come back to that in a second. I want to test the value on the other side of the critical point, x equals 10. I'm going to plug that into my first derivative, and I'm going to get s prime of 10 is equal to 2 times 10 minus 13, 122 over 10 cubed. And when I do the arithmetic on the right-hand side this time, I get a positive value. So a negative value and a positive value. We want to go ahead and plot those on our number line. So because we got a negative value, what we can say is that the derivative is negative everywhere to the left of the critical point and positive everywhere to the right of the critical point. So I like to draw arrows like this and say negative and then positive. So when the derivative is negative, it means that the original function is decreasing. When the derivative is positive, it means that the original function is increasing. So we can say that to the left of x equals 9, the original function s, the sum of the squares, is decreasing. To the right of x equals 9, the sum of the squares is increasing, which means that we can see visually here that at x equals 9, that's the point at which the sum of the squares is minimized. So this is a critical point. It is the point that minimizes the sum of the squares, so we can go ahead and call it the minimum. But once we've established that, we always, always, always have to come back to our question and make sure that we answer the exact question we've been asked, because the information we're being asked for might not just be x equals 9. So what are we being asked for? Find two numbers whose product is negative 81. So if we know that x equals 9, so we have this value here, x equals 9, and we're looking for the two numbers, remember we called them x and y, we're looking for the two numbers whose product is negative 81, in other words, x, y equals negative 81, we need to plug x equals 9 in for x here, and what we get is 9y equals negative 81. When we divide both sides by 9, we get y is equal to negative 9. Now we can go ahead and say we have x equals 9 and y equals negative 9. These are the two numbers whose product is 81, where the sum of their squares is a minimum.